You know, look at that gap right there. Yeah, I know. I really like the model, so I want you to care. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Uh, this is all Cam. This is not a spring chicken today. We're going to be continuing to give you, to give you the history of some Christmas music. First song we're going to be talking about is Silent Night. Mm. And a lot of you are familiar with that song because you probably grew up with it in church. And it's actually one of the more popular Christmas songs. But is it really a Christmas song? It's actually a hymn and all again. Mm. It basically has nothing to do with Christmas. It does have to do with the birth of Christ, but it has nothing to do with Christmas. So, but um, it's just funny. Well, wouldn't that have to do with Christmas if it has to do with the birth no, of Christ? No, because it was, um, the, the, it, okay, it, it's the birth of Christ according to the day that they, it, you know, Christmas Eve according to their figures, not Christmas Eve according to ours. Christmas music today deals with Christmas. This does not deal with Christmas, it deals with the birth of Christ. Mm. Totally not a Christmas song. It's just uh -huh. a, it's a church hymnal, and church hymnals are often turned into Christmas music. Uh -huh. So there is a difference. So a Christmas song is a song that is specifically written for Christmas. Popular Christmas music is not necessarily Christmas songs. Uh -huh. I mean, um, uh, Santa Claus is Coming to Town is a Christmas song. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer is a Christmas song. Uh, Silver Bells is a Thanksgiving song. Um, Old Lang Syne is a start of the New Year song. Oh, Christmas oh, oh, Roasting by an Open Fire is Thanksgiving. So that's why there's not there's more Christmas music than there are Christmas songs. People don't there is a differentiation because you know, you know so but uh, Silent Night is uh, still not hush not. Is a popular Christmas carol composed in 1818 in Austria. It was declared an intangible cultural heritage by UNESCO in 2011. That must have really pissed the people off at the UN because it's a Christian song. Mm -hmm. um, KKO. KKK. Isn't that amazing? Is that really K? What's the abbreviation for it? KKK. <laughs> I love that. KKK. So I'm going to get rid of that one. Isn't that amazing? Uh, mm -hmm. Somebody dubbed it KKK. They did for Silent Night. Yeah, it's probably an abbreviation for one of the version, one of the na nicknames of the song. You know, like uh, uh, oh, of, you know what? Okay, okay, the Three Kings. Yeah. K -K -K. K -K. King, King, this, King, this, right? Yeah, the song was first performed on Christmas Eve, eighteen eighteen, at the Saint Nicholas Parish Church in Ostfriesland, the small town on the uh, Salzach River, part of the former Archbishop of Salzburg. Um, uh, you know, it just uh, passed to Australia in 1816. The young priest father, Joseph Moore, had become to uh, Obendorf the year before. He had already written the original lyrics to the song, Silent Nights. In 1816 at Montfar, the hometown of his father, where he worked as a, as a conductor. Basically, he was not a priest, he was a... Mm. The melody was composed by a, Francis Xavier Gruber, schoolmaster and organist in the nearby village of Einsdorf. Before Christmas Eve, Moore brought the words to Gruber and asked him to compose a melody and guitar accompanied for the church service. Both performed the carol during the Mass on the night of the 24th. See, it wasn't a Christmas song. It was a, Christ it was a, it was a New Year's Eve Mass. It was a hymnal for, New Year, for the coming of the day. Mm. Uh, Gruber gives no mention of specific information of creating a song according to the song since provided by Austria's Silent Night Society. One supposition that the church organ was no longer working, so that Moore and Gruber therefore created a song for accompaniment by guitar. Said the first mention of the broken organ was in a, organ was in a book published in the United States in 1965. Isn't that something? Mm. Uh, basically, uh, ba some believe that uh, Moore simply wanted a hymn that could be played on a guitar. Not a, kid, not a Christmas thing, but a hymnal. The Sound Night says there are so many romantic stories and legends involved. Um, the, uh, basically, the original manuscript of the song has been lost. Somebody misplaced it. And that's something which means somebody's got something that's worth a lot of money and they're holding it. Um, let's see. Our manuscript was discovered in 1995 and his handwriting dates it back to 1820 uh, where he was uh, talking about what he did. So. Uh, basically, it's just uh, basically been translated into god awful amount of language. 140 some languages a song has been translated into. That's 140? 
It that's is a lot. How many different languages are there? That's pushing. I mean, in, it, I think that's almost every single language. It's what it talk about, South of it, what mm -hmm. people cannot get it through their heads mm -hmm. that not all music is Christmas music. This is a church hymnal, and it's spread across all of the all of the uh, religions of the world because it, if if you uh, if you basically translate a little bit, you can talk about the birth of all of the leaders of your religion. Uh, the same thing. Do, I wonder if they do that. Yeah. Because if it's in that many different languages, yeah. they yeah. very likely do. Yeah. They should, Actually, this is one of those things, if you're listening and you're from another country and you're familiar with how they use it, please yeah. do comment because we'd love to hear yeah. about it. And here's the unique part about it. it while the song was directly written for guitar accompaniment, it is one of the most recorded non-accompanied songs in the history of the world. What? People will use That's they'll really do, no, They'll do choir versions. Oh. They do. They'll bring out like the uh, like, for instance, in our country, the Mormon Tabernacle, Tabernacle Choir, Choir. In, in Australia, the Vienna, uh, you know, the Vienna Boys Choir. I mean, I've seen them, I watch Japanese television at Christmas. They do not, they're not Christians with their folks. And they'll sit there on Christmas and everybody will get all the people that cannot sing a note. I mean, these people, like my father said in Japan, it was like listening to going, ah, listening to singing, and all of a sudden they get together and they'll do something like Sukiyaki or Silent Night. Mm -hmm. And it's just, you know, a beautiful, they got, these people can play like, I mean, you talk, you want to hear music played right, you go to Japan and their orchestras know how to play everything. They just can't sing. I mean, it's like the French can't sing. But the French can sing. I, you, uh, I've heard French singers that basically can't carry a tune, sing Silent Night with no background other than just a song. Because it becomes different. It's just, uh, okay, uh, they say in World War I, it was sung simultaneously in French, uh, English and German to the troops during the, the truce of 1914. My father was there in World War II when, uh, 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 on, uh, when they basically had every, all the fighting stopped on Christmas Eve. All the fighting stopped in one section of the bat battle. So and, they can celebrate Christmas. And they celebrate Christmas. And then afterwards they went back then to war. Then they went back to killing one another. But, I mean, they but said, for a few hours. My father said they were shifting food, you know, what we had that they didn't have, you know, like, you know, for Christmas stuff, you know, like chocolates and coffee. Oh, they were? And they were sending back, the Germans would send things over, to, it was a back and forth thing for a few hours, and they did have contact with one another with the people going back and forth trading stuff. And then they still went back to war. And then as soon as the, as soon as it, the, the Christmas Eve it ended, they all started killing one another again. I mean, the same person that it came across with chocolates for you to eat for Christmas Eve, then shot the same person that he gave the chocolate to. So yeah. it was, that, that did happen. My father said he saw, you know, but he, but he was writing in, a, in a, at the top of a tank. He was seeing the bodies of dead Germans, of which he had been uh, drinking schnapps with um, an hour earlier. So that's, that's how it works. But now we'll go to the, <clears throat> like I said, it's the most widely sung song in the world done without orchestra accompaniment, which is simple because everybody knows them. Here we go. Silent night, holy night, oh. Christ the Savior is born, but if you sing the traditional first verse, it makes no next mention of anything other than the birth of a child and his mother. That's all. It's the next part that becomes the religious part, 
and a lot of people basically will dump every how many things okay mostly that's mostly what you hear people singing is the first verse and then but you know they you go um you go silent night holy night shepherds quake at the sight glory stream from heaven afar heavenly hosts sing hallelujah Christ the Savior is born Christ the Savior is born See, you know we're going up and down in different spots. Yeah, what happens is it's also a song that basically Another song that's an oxymoron. Basically, it's, imp it's uh, it is impossible to sing without having a big vocal range, because you have to go. You're changing your range. That last set of things do not work. Jesus at thy birth. You know, basically, you're singing the same the same phrase twice, but you're singing it in two different melodies. But that's where it becomes. Um, um, that's where it becomes very religious is when it gets into the, the seconds and third verses. Otherwise, it is not a religious piece of music. It is a, it is a hymn, a church hymnal is available at any church. I mean, basically, in reality, you, you, talk, you dump out everything after the first verse. You can be talking about Buddha, mm -hmm. about Muhammad, the birth of Muhammad, the birth of Buddha, the birth of all of the great figures can be said in that first stanza, which is why it works. Because uh, my guess is you won't find a Muslim in the world that can't sing the first part of A Silent uh, Night. So, it, it's not, uh, but, um... Now this next song, yeah. this has got to be a Christmas song, or yeah. Christmas carol. Only because of its title, yeah, which it, is... No, this one is because it has to do with giving the Christmas treats, so... Ah, so which is, we wish... You a Merry Christmas. Mm -hmm. this, uh, right. the member of, okay, we, we've gone through 20 songs so far, and there was only two songs before this directly written for Christmas that were Christmas songs. The others were folk, tale, folk songs that were done long ago, our church hymnals, mm -hmm. that just happened to be done for Christmas. Remember, the last song was not a Christmas song. It was a hymnal for the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm for that day, so it, um, it's a 16th century English carol from the west country of England. The original is Christmas carol lies in the English tradition where wealthy people in the community gave Christmas treats to the carolers on Christmas Eve, such as figgy puddings that were very much the modern day, uh, like modern day puddings. It is one of the few traditional English carols that makes mention of the New Year's celebration, so guess what folks? Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's not necessarily a Christmas song. It's, it, it deals with the, you know, uh, uh, oh, you know, it deals with the giving of the gifts for Christmas. Ah, so, which of course for many kids is their absolute favorite time of the year. Yeah, I said we wish you. Um, okay, it, uh, all the songs of Christmas have universal appeal. The song "We Wish You a Merry Christmas" brings a smile on the face of everybody that listens to it. Not in the United States anymore. If you walk up and say, I wish you a Merry Christmas, they'll basically knock you down and beat the hell out of you. Oh, they will. They, uh, you don't think so? How many Christmas Actually, I do believe you. Yeah. Which is really kind of sad, because I don't know if you say Happy Hanukkah, that you'd get that type of reaction. No, you can say Happy Hanukkah, you can say Happy Kwanzaa, you can say Merry this, Merry that, but you do not say... Merry Christmas, because people will look at you like you're some sort of loony. Which is, of course, why we want to say Merry Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, the word Merry itself invokes the feelings of Merry. happiness and merriment. This song is a particular makes one aware of the fact that the festival of Christmas has arrived and we should celebrate in the best way possible. It's the festival of Christmas. That has nothing to do with Christmas. It is the festival of, which means it's a big party. Ha. See? That's the whole trick. Um, um, the author of the poser song remains unknown to the whole world. The something, the song "We Wish You a Merry Christmas" actually reflects the Christmas tradition of showing gifts. The name given to these singers were carolers. Christmas—that's where the Christmas carol came—is from. We wish you a merry Christmas. 
Ooh. Uh, basically, it, it's just a dessert, to hear, and, 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 but um, uh, it, 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 see, nobody is it obscure. It did not affect the song from getting popular and it's sung with great pleasure by the people of the world at the Christmas festivals all over the all over the universe. So basically, remember, it is is a festival, and it, the festival lasts like the twelve days until the first of the new year, mm -hmm. which means it, it you know it, it's like starting on the twenty. It starts on the twenty third or something, and the twenty twentieth, and ends the first. So it's a festival. It's a lot of a lot of things dealing with Christmas are festivals. So, but uh, here we go. <clears throat> we try this one. Uh, we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We Good tidings we bring to you and your kin. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Now bring us some figgy pudding and bring and bring some out there. I thought it was bring us some figgy pudding. Yeah, I said bring us bring us some figgy pudding and bring some out here. For we Bar. all like figgy pudding and bring some out here. We, we won't go, go until we get some, some, so bring some out here. It's, it's a season for music and a time of good, good cheer. So we wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Good tidings. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Oh, that's why, because this is times three. Times three, yeah. Good tidings Good to you, wherever you are. See, I don't Good even tidings know these. for Christmas, Christmas and a Happy New Year. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We, we wish you a Merry Christmas. Christmas. We, we wish you a Merry Christmas, Christmas and a Happy New Year. Year. The problem is there's um oh here, here's here's a here's a modern here's a variation. We want, we, want lucky some, we want some lucky cookies. We want some lucky cookies. We want some lucky cookies. Bring them in bring right, it right here. here. So, isn't that a good one? I mean, you don't think, um, uh, but that's basically. That is bad. So, uh, oh, here's a. Oh, Oh, bring us a figgy pudding, oh, bring us a pretty pudding, oh, bring us a figgy pudding and a cup of good cheer. You don't want that good cheer. We won't go until we get some. We won't go until we get some. We won't go until we get some, so bring it right here. I swear, this is an eating it's a and drinking song. It's an eating and drinking song. It's a festival song. You know, I, I could imagine them going, like, 99 bottles of beer on the wall. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. it's kind of like, and have another swig of eggnog and have another. What? Yeah. What makes you think of that? You know, but, but, but it's just for family and friends, for peace among men, without end, we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. The joy of his birth bring peace upon earth. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. The young and the old, their stories are told. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. This is the part that is never never sang. This I've is never a, heard that part sang before. This is another verse basically that basically is not dumped. So we, like I said, this is a drinking and eating song, folks. It is really it's a uh, you know, we wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. This is what a lot of things, watch a lot of television, a lot of variety shows, and you'll, I mean, um, for instance, I used to, when I was little, actually I wasn't little, God, I was performing on a show. That's bad, Dave. I used to dance with a great big tall. You know, dance was on the, the, um, the Jackie Gleason show. Jackie Gleason would come out at the end of a show at Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. And then he'd stick his thing. And a Happy New Year. And he said, Merry Christmas, everyone. And then he'd leave. So, it is that's, a, that's always, it's a good ending song. It's a good ending song. And, um, uh, the same thing with uh, people like, like Jack Benny, who was a Jew, George Burns, who was a Jew, uh, you know, a Red Skelton, they would end their things with, we wish you a Merry Christmas, and then they drink, take, they toast to everyone out there, you know, and, and would, would, the only difference is that, you know, Red Skelton would say, and God bless. Mm -hmm. That would be it. So that's, you know, most of the people don't have the luxury of seeing those things like I did. I grew up with those things. I actually worked on the same stage as one of the shooting Christmas shows in July, folks. It was really hot. Oh, you were? California. So, yeah, it was Christmas shows in July. 
So, that was really early. No, no, but that's what you do because you have to make um, it's shooting time. You shoot them like because remember the Christmas music has to be out in October. Mm. So that's oh, that's because that's they, they shot it and then they released it. They released the music, you know, because they wanted the music to, you know, well, and uh, and Prince and Price will be playing, you know, the Artful Dodger on on the Red Skelton show. You know, they would basically, uh, you know, the Red Skelton will be doing, uh, you know, his you know, his hobo impersonation, you know, his hobo for the Christmas, and and Charlton Heston will be reciting the Christmas Carol. Our Jack Benny will be playing, you know, the the Ghost of Christmas Past. With you know, this this big, this is what they do. They let everybody know when the filming was done, and then they would sort of beat everybody over the head for four or five months. But they would release, they would go on shows in October. Okay, uh, you know, and then you see Jack Benny, who actually could play a great violin. He'd come on and go. Mm -hmm. And then they'd be the choir behind him. He'd be plugging a show that wasn't going to come on until December because of the fact they're doing reciprocal stuff. He does this, they do this, and then um, they plug everything for months, which they no longer do. So, mm -hmm. but that's the time that has gone by, and it's politically incorrect to even mention Christmas anymore. But no, we come to the new one, which has no history. Ah. We end it. We end the thing with something that is totally meant. It is one of only th four. Actually, three. This is the uh, fourth song that was actually meant for Christmas. Mm. This one is Christmas Hits. And somebody we know very much actually did this one. <laughs> you know, but. Um, You're even going to admit it. Yeah. Mm. Well, I wrote it. I'm I know. very happy with the thing. It's basically it's a universal song that has the most simple lyrics in the universe to sing. You know, we're, we're going to tell people the big news today. You know, because, um, you know, the fact that Christmas is, is meant to be a song that anyone can sing, whether they have a voice or whether they don't have a voice. You can talk about it, you can be singing at parties, you can be singing in buses, you can be singing, you know, like um, it starts uh, very simple with Christmas is what you mean Christmas to be. Christmas is, it means something to me. Christmas is what it means to you. Oh, what Christmas is, please tell me. Christmas is my favorite time of year. Oh, Christmas is a time of good cheer. And Christmas is. Monty's turn for treats. <laughs> so you see, Christmas is whatever you want the song to be. Christmas is designed for you and me. Mm -hmm. Merry Christmas and not happy holidays. <laughs>